I'm just going to talk you through a few things that we do when we first get into the grouse butt. So we put the shooting sticks up. These sticks here are basically so that when you're shooting, you cannot move your gun and pass it through so that it points down the line. As with all shooting, the key thing is safety. Cardinal rule is do not swing through the line. And once the horn's gone, that's the indication that there's no more shooting forward. Obviously, nobody wants to shoot any of the beaters or their dogs. Uh, so once that goes off, you raise your gun in the air to show you've heard the hooter. And from that point onwards, by all means, face forward to pick up the birds. But you wait until they've gone over 12 o'clock before you engage with them, ideally shooting them behind as they come through. If you're organised, you'll have the absolute best success. So first thing up, cartridge bag, open, ready where you can have easy access to it. Gun ready, pointing forward and safe. The gun's resting on the gun slip so that when I go and grab it, I'm not grabbing a handful of this spiky heather that's everywhere. You need to be aggressive with grass. See it on the horizon, throw your gun at it and pull the trigger. If you think too much, they're gone. Try and mount on the bird and swing like you would with a pheasant, it's gone. And you've got to remember again that most of the time when you're taking the shot, that bird will be dropping. So shoot its feet off and you'll kill it. So footwork's really important when you're in the grouse butt. The birds are coming in low and fast, like we've said. So that means that if you've got to move on these birds, you can just step into them and that allows you to move. So you can go from here, take your second bird out there, or if you need to shoot behind, barrels up in the air like this, step round, two steps, and you're clear behind, and then you're good to go. The etiquette of grouse shooting is not quite as strict as pheasant shooting and also to a lesser extent partridge shooting. The, uh, as long as you're not swinging through the line, really, grouse are fair game. If you see it, shoot it. They can change direction, change their mind, go back the way they came. So if you leave birds for your neighbours, the chances are they won't get to shoot them either. Uh, obviously, be gentlemanly about it. If you've shot lots of birds and the birds are coming through fairly predictably on a line and you've shot two or three birds heading for your neighbour, it would be nice to leave, leave the next two or three for him if he's not getting other shooting, but no hard and fast rules there. There you go, coming round. Me and many grouse shooting addicts, the pure joy of this sport is the variety and unpredictability of the shots presented by these 100% wild game birds. The drive was superb, the horn's about to go any moment. My shooting was somewhat less superb, but that was a full bag of uh, cartridges in there. <laughs> They've all gone. Look at the spaniel and the rabbit. They're all over the... <laughs> And a very enthusiastic spaniel chasing a hare that he'll never catch, so very good, very good. So after the second or third drive, we head back to the top of the moor where there's a beautiful lunch set out buffet style for us, overlooking the spectacular scenery. Gives you a chance to reminisce over some of the shots you made and some of the ones you didn't. Right, so we're in the grouse butt. Today, we're very lucky we're gonna be shooting them with, uh, with double guns. So Diggory here is gonna be loading for me and we'll just talk you through how the whole process works, really. In terms of demonstrating the process, we've got two empty guns here. So Diggory, if you take the second gun. So first thing always with uh, double gunning is barrel skywards on both parts and never point them down apart from when we're shooting forward. So it's exactly the same safety effort as you do with any other type of shooting. Obviously you've just got two guns in the butt, both of which will be loaded at certain points in time. So as we are there, Diggory, if you close that, that gun and we have it upwards, the gun will take the birds, bang, bang in front. With the right hand, 
barrels up, pass it back, second hand, left hand out, and the loader slaps that gun into his hand. Release, bang, bang, up, and that is the process. It's circular, and it just keeps it going. And you'll see that the gun doesn't need to remove his eyes from the front because always the loader's job is to put that in his hand by slapping it into his receiving hand. Now, if we're moving here and we're gonna shoot cubbies coming through, we wanna take these birds as far out in front as possible. So what may happen is on a day like today when the birds are not gonna be at their quickest because we haven't got a howling gale as we often do have at this time of year, what we'll do is we'll take bang, bang, switch guns, turn round, bang, bang. As always, when you turn around, your gun barrels go straight up in the air. We've got the sticks in the way to stop the guns from swinging through the line. You can see the butts above and below us. The gun goes straight up in the air, two step, bang, bang. If need be, the loader can always tuck himself in. If the cubby's out on the left, he'll get out of the way. It's a great way to shoot. It's a classic way to shoot. And frankly, I think it's the pinnacle of driven game shooting. So I'm really excited today. So the grouse butts are situated in folds in the land, which gives you the false horizon in front. These birds just burst over the false horizon 30, 40 yards in front of you. They're upon you and then they're gone. If you don't move fast on them and aggressively on them, you'll miss them. Oh, what a shot. the end of a, a great day on the moor. The bees have just come through now, they're going to pick up. These grouse have been a little humbling today and uh, the sport is phenomenal. I don't think you can touch them as a game bird, can you? No, you certainly couldn't on the second drive. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back, count up the bag, see what we've got, finish up the pickup and uh, go from there. But it's as much fun actually watching the dogs pick up as it is uh, actually shooting but not quite so we'll get this packed up and uh, head off our base for the week is the stunning and historic Kincardine castle we return from a day's shooting and after freshening up we'll head down and meet in the hall for cocktails before dinner there's a three course meal served every evening using some of the finest local ingredients and trying to serve as much of the game taken by the party during the week as possible After dinner, we'll head back to the main hall where there'll be a fabulous cheese board served with some local single malts and some fabulous vintage port. At this point, it's time to turn in for the night and get ready to do it all again tomorrow. <laughs>